Hello and welcome to the C++ Insights YouTube channel. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a C++ trainer offering classes worldwide, on-site or remote. This is my YouTube channel where I use my tool C++ Insights to teach you various topics related to C++. So I'm glad you're back. Last time I promised you that in this episode we continued talking about structing classes, non-type template parameter, we had floating point numbers as non-type template parameters the last time. And here this time we start out in Compile Explorer. Isn't that great? So I like Matt Godbold's tool here. I use that for my example. I have a struct here, call that one config. It has a min and a max as data members. And now I can use this struct as a non-type template parameter. It boils down to the rule that all the data members that are in your struct or class must be public. This is the requirement that you can use it as a non-type template parameter. As I do here, I call that one CFG and let me make that one a little bit bigger. So I have my function fun here, I have a printf and that one prints out min and max and access that one by saying cfg.min and cfg.max. In main, I invoke fun by passing a new object of type config with the values three and nine. I omitted the type here, so if it helps you, I can also spell it out, but I'm usually glad if I don't have to, I like to omit these things. What the compiler generates now in the assembly is that we can see we have a call to fun of config three and nine. And the instantiation the compiler creates for me is the same, it's config of three and nine. There's one more thing you can see. We have a special new thing here. There's a template parameter object for config three and nine. And well, no surprise here, right? With the values three and nine. It's, I would say, very similar to the floating points we looked at the last episode. If we have the structs here as non-type template parameters, since all the data members must be public, this is not just a requirement coming up from the nowhere. This is because we use the values of these non-type template parameter of these public data members to make a unique name. So if I, as last time, disable the demangling, and I hope you don't have a demangler in your head, but um, if you have slightly something like that, then you can see. So it starts with the name of the struct, followed by some prefixes that stating that it's, um, in this case, an integer with the number three, followed by another integer with the number nine, for example, filled with a couple of things, um, don't ask me on the spot. But this is roughly how it works. If I would change or maybe better, add a second call to that one, then we can see now we have a three here and a four here, we have two different instantiations. You can see that with the floating points, this is how things are different between the instantiations. And if you care the output here, of course it matches. So we have min three max nine and min four max nine. Now, this is one part of knowing and one part of seeing, right? But what can C++ and science do there for you? And this was something that um, I had to spend a lot of time on, especially these things. So figuring out what to do with this. And if um, we demangle things again and what to do here. Now, this here is the code just in C++ and science. You have to enable only C++20, then everything works out of the box. If I do the transformation, then you can see in the instantiation of the function template, the first thing I had to do is insert a global variable or global object. The standard requires that it's const. In my tests, it didn't compile. So the transform code didn't compile if it was just const. So I had to make it const expert. The object itself is static. It's of the type of the non-type template parameter. And then it has to come up with a unique name. And the easiest way to make it unique is give it the name of the type and the values like we saw it in Compile Explorer. Then let that one being initialized. And we have our variable, our static global variable, we pass that one to the instantiation of fun, all the calls now to min and max or you know, the invocations, they are now redirected to this global object, which is created here. 
So this is, as far as I could decipher it, the magic behind classes or structs as non-type template parameters. We will get a global static const object for each different parameter. Let's call it configuration. They are then used in your function templates as the non-type template parameters. So I hope this transformation helps you to get a better grip on how the non-type template parameters in C++20 work for structs and classes. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.